Hello and welcome to Trigger Point Research Setups. There's some really interesting news out this week and what I wanted to do is talk to you a little bit about that and see how it relates to some of the setups that are out there and some of the things that are going on. We had news from the Dow Jones Industrial Average. There's going to be a major shakeup, a change to the components. We're going to see that Hewlett Packard, Bank of America, and Alcoa are going to be ousted and putting into the index on the 23rd of September will be Nike, Visa, and Goldman Sachs. Now, one of the things you need to know about that is that the Dow Jones Industrial Average is a price-weighted composite, meaning that the stocks with the highest prices have the largest weight overall. Now, when we look at Hewlett Packard, Bank of America, and Alcoa, all of those are, you know, a little bit over 10, maybe up to 15, and then under. Whereas if you look at some of these other stocks, for example, you have Goldman Sachs that we're looking at right now. We're talking about 100 and you know, over $100 uh, for, for uh, Goldman Sachs, 150 Nike's in the, in the 70s. Visa's over 100 and change, obviously 150 or so. Now, the thing is that you have to realize is that when you look at these, what's going to happen is that these are going to be probably the second and third rated in terms of component size compared to all the others, and they're going to hold a lot more weight than, for example, many of the ones that did before. Hold a lot more weight that Hewlett Packard, Bank of America, and Alcoa together is going to be higher for these. But what I wanted to show you here was some of the things that happened. Now, if you take a look at the chart simply for Visa, just taking a look at what happened here, it was only yesterday that we did see this, uh, the actual uh, breakout, and that was on the news that this was occurring, it was on the news that we would see a uh, inclusion into the Dow Jones. And what happens here is that you're going to find that many of the managers that are required to participate in the uh, same strategy as the Dow Jones Industrials will, in fact, have to buy these stocks. The same is true if you look at Goldman Sachs, another breakout right there, and uh, Nike as well. Um, so all of these are breaking out and uh, coming into a very significant uh, area of upside. Now, if we look at this from a trading perspective, just taking a look at what we're seeing in terms of uh, how this looks, you know, you take a look right here, very simply, at a very, very easy to look at chart. This is what we call our altimeter, and you're finding the very key support and resistance zones. Now, what happened here was, if you look back and you look over to the area of mid-September, we'll blow this up a little bit here for you, uh, mid to late uh, September, we saw that there was a continued breakdown of the actual, uh, you know, of, of the of the chart. And what happened there was that it was interesting because there was a good level of support that had been identified. And you look right here, yeah, September 26th, and it was about uh, 62 and three quarters. And what happened was it bounced right off of there. Now, is it any magic that that happened? You can see that a lot of times happening. You can see that the support that was drawn previously continues to be within a few cents. Good levels of support for this stock. When it does break down, when you do see it break down, it moves in, down very sharply. And then it did, in fact, in this case here back in June, obviously turn around, move up higher, and then consolidate for some time. This consolidation zone right there. Now, one of the big things here is that when we did see that in the uh, latest move for Nike, that it was trying to move above its key resistance. And then you had one more level that you could consider being additional resistance right over at about the uh, 65 and three quarters level, it just couldn't get past there. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at this in a different way, if we look at uh, just a straight, simple straight line of where this is here, you can see that really that resistance from way back in June held very well and the stock couldn't get past it. So really what happened here was this was a news driven event that allowed this to move higher. So this now is in quite a bit of uncharted territory. When you look at the stock for a longer period of time, you can see that climb, and you can see where it is now. But let's take a look now at Goldman Sachs, because this is one that still has some resistance that's on the overhead side, on the overside. And we're going to take a look at this with also the radar. Now, I'm going to zoom into this as well. So Goldman Sachs here. What happened here, and let's really make this uh, a very clean and easy chart to take a look at. So what you have here is the actual volume at price. 
Yellow lines are the ones that give us key levels, very important and very high volume levels. And when you look at the colorations, as you get from the, red, from the yellow to the red to the blue to the purple, less and less and less volume really at those levels. And you can see that if you just simply take a look at this, you can see that there was an actual, uh, a very, uh, I guess we'd call this a, uh, let's take a look. This would be a, a right here, see that? Right there was a was a gapping hole, and that's where you saw this tremendous move to the upside. And when you see those kind of moves to the upside, right here through Ju July 8th through about the 22nd, without any volume, you have to question how long is that going to be sustainable. We saw it backtrack a little bit the next few days, tried to make another new high. What happened on this circumstance, right? in the August 6th, 5th and 6th, you can see that big spike higher and then it reversed down. Now that was looking like an exhaustion move on Goldman at that point. And then once you came and you got once again past the levels of about 163 and 04, well that was where the support really was. And you can see that that breakdown was pretty evident because all you had to do was look back on the chart and find out where that hole was, uh, the fast zone. As a matter of fact, if you look back for some time, it was considerably a, uh, obvious that the area and the zone between about 154 to about 163 was a no volume zone, so it could move very quickly. Now still at this point right now, we have the opportunity for Goldman to move to the upside and the catalyst of course is, is going to continue to be that it's included inside of the Dow Jones Industrials. What you really need to see is a break of I would say right about the 166 to 167 level. When you get to those levels and particularly right at the 167.96, there's very little resistance left at that point. As a matter of fact, you can see that right about what we talked about, 168.10 is the altimeter, which gives you the very easy viewing of this. Now, on the other hand, you're in a zone that is just vacant. There's not much going on right here. So the potential also for it to backtrack for some reason all the way down and take a move down to about 161, not a big deal, not a big move. You know, you have some support there, right, inside of the levels that you can see marked by the green lines and the red line and the teal line. All of these and even possibly this one over uh, at about 160. There's some really good support there. So you kind of look at those and you say, okay, this is something that I can work against. And if it does break up, I'm going to have to be on the long side. And now that it is above, and it's well above, by the way, we haven't even seen uh, the next level because of the gap. There's really not much to work against otherwise. The opportunity is really above about 167.5. Well, thanks for joining me. Go over to TriggerPointResearch.com and check out all the free offerings as well as the uh, setups that we put up there. If you take a look at some of them have really performed very well in the last couple of weeks. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again next time.